Okay, so I've just received a Raspad 3, which is a 10.1 inch casing, uh, basically to make your Raspberry Pi 4 into a tablet. I don't really do unboxing videos, so let's get rid of the box and just show you what comes with it. So we've got an instruction manual, which has got quite a bit of detail in it, looks pretty decent. We've got a figure eight mains cable, which goes into the power brick. And the nice thing about the power brick, it's a decent size connector. Uh, I really don't like uh, connectors that are very thin, but this is pretty substantial, so you're not going to break that by accident. I've got an interesting looking SD card extender and a bit that looks like I may even need to solder on, but I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, a screwdriver, a fan, some heat sinks, obviously a load of screws there, uh, and some nice bespoke cables. So this is a uh, micro HDMI to micro HDMI cable and another one. And one's longer than the other, and I guess what it is, one of them is going to be for the HDMI socket on the side, which you can see there, uh, and the other one will be connecting to the touchscreen display. Also, I've got a very short USB 3 A to A cable, and also a USB C to USB C cable. Right, so let's move this out of the way and have a look at the actual casing. So, compared to my 10.5 inch iPad Pro, which I do all my editing on, uh, it is definitely thick. Uh, it is a very big casing, but obviously the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, is you know, a reasonable thickness compared to something like an iPad. And the thing about it is more about flexibility. Uh, and the one thing that really annoys me about the iPad is it still doesn't give you a proper desktop web browser. Uh, it's a good browser, it's nice and fast, but certain things uh, like managing a YouTube account, uh, it doesn't act like a full browser and it tries to launch the app and so it gives you less features than you would get on a full web browser, which is what I'll be able to run on the Raspad 3. And although I love my iPad and my iPhone, the one thing it doesn't do is allow you to tinker with it, uh, which is what you can definitely do with the Raspberry Pi 4. So I can run operating systems like Windows 10, obviously loads of Linux distros, I can run Android OS, I can run Chromium OS, I can run all sorts of things on it. And let's not forget connectivity. Definitely a difference there. And on the other side, we've got SD card slot, and you can see there's various different, there's a power button, a uh, volume button, and also a brightness button, and this is a battery indicator when you turn it on. Right, I'm gonna have to take it apart now and have a look inside. And I would use the supplied screwdriver, but I'd rather use this handy kit, link in the description. So it looks like five screws. So does it just lift off? So I did see there's a little bit here that looks like you prise it apart. Yeah, that's coming apart nicely. So the back, nothing that interesting in there. Well, there's lots of space. Lots of space for, uh, obviously it comes with a fan. Yeah, that's interesting. We can have a look at that. So let's pop this flat down on the desk. There's nothing on my desk, so it's nice and safe. This board looks nice. Let's go a bit closer to that. Yeah, so this is cool in it with all the USBs. So obviously the Pi's gonna go here, all the cables are gonna go across, and then that's gonna give you these ports. But it's nice to have a look at that. Oh, speakers as well. We've got some uh, oval speakers there. And this must be the battery, yeah. And what does the battery say on it? It says lithium ion 18650, 11.1 .1 volt, 3200 milliamp. It's certainly a lot neater than the 14-inch uh, tablet that I made. Completely portable. So this is now running off battery power uh, with a Raspberry Pi 4, running Android 11. So not the most elegant of tablets, although I did enjoy doing that and I did get some great things running on it. It's a nice friendly instruction book. Uh, it's just got an itinerary there to show what's, what's supplied. Uh, so connect the Ethernet port to the Raspberry Pi and the main board. Oh, I need a Pi. So I've got this one I've been using. Um, it'd be interesting to know, that cooler might be able to work in the case. And then I've got, uh, I better not do that officially, um, so in this video, but I reckon that cooler would possibly work inside this case. Yeah, that might be good. Right, let's take it out of this first of all. And I think that's it. I think, I think the, the space that's in there is gonna be interesting. I'm thinking faster storage possibilities, cooling, all sorts of things. So take that off for now, but probably come back to that. Right, so it's gotta be that way around. Oh, oh no, it's gotta be that way around. It looks like you probably don't screw it in until the end. I can see the sense in that. 
There you go, so no worries with the Ethernet cable. Then we've got this little short USB A to A cable, I like that one. Yeah, it's very clear instructions. So uh, plug in the micro HDMI cable. So B, which is the shorter one of the two, is going to go uh, in first. Just give you a closer look. So you can see this bit of plastic which roots the cables out around the outside. So this screw in the middle is not going to be anywhere near in the cables. And the Type C cable, let's just plug that in. Yeah, so that goes up around there. So plug the SD card in and then the little ribbon cable goes to here. I'm going to screw them in now before I do the ribbon cable because I think that will be easier. It doesn't say to do that but I feel that will be better for me to do. So I'm using the shorter screws to secure the pie to the board. So the ribbon cable is not the easiest to get in but it's gone in and I guess there's enough clearance there. That's just going to bend back over when I put the case on it. So it talks about putting the heat, shims or heat sinks on. I don't like sticking heat sinks on my Pi, um, but obviously if you're going to use it with the cooling solution they provide, then that's what you want to be doing. Um, but uh, I'm just going to use the fan, I think. It also talks about if you want to use the in and out pins of the Pi, you can connect a common 40-pin ribbon cable. So I've now fitted the fan. Uh, that just screws onto the back here, and then you can see that it fits onto this second board. And I've moved this USB 3 cable down to the uh, bottom connection because I can still plug something in the top here. Uh, but also I've got two USB 2 sockets there as well. So if I wanted to, I could put my mouse keyboard dongle inside the device. Uh, and then you haven't got anything using the outside terminals. But I'm going to use it in this instance. So I wrote Windows 11 to this yesterday on this 64 gig uh, Samsung bar. If I pop that into the USB 3 socket, then the operating system will boot from that. But if I put an SD card in, then the operating system will automatically go to the SD card. Uh, so it's quite a nice way of doing it. As it is, I'm going to try booting it from Windows 10 and then trying with an SD card image. Because I've actually seen in the book that they've got their own operating system. I think it's based on Raspberry Pi OS, uh, but it's called Raspad, and uh, I'm going to try that out later as well. So I need to pop the lid on and screw that up. Still plenty of room even with that Samsung USB stick in. Okay, so as you can see, Windows 11 has started up. That's booted from the USB stick inside. So if I drag up from the bottom uh, and then tap in this box, I get the on-screen keyboard. I can put my password in and hit return. And that will log me into Windows. Now this is in its early stages of Windows 11. It hasn't even been released yet. This is an insider preview. Uh, and so I don't think any of the touchscreen things have been implemented yet because what's supposed to happen is the device is supposed to detect when you detach a keyboard. Obviously this is a tablet and doesn't have a keyboard, but I was thinking that maybe if I plugged in a keyboard, so I've got a little keyboard dongle here. So if I plug that in, and if I tap the Windows key, you can see that works fine. But if I unplug it, does it change any of the icons? No, I don't think it does. Microsoft showed a version where it makes certain things bigger, um, which looked really interesting. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, Notification Center. And you can see here, location, nightlight, all settings. All of that seems to be working quite nicely with touch. But there's also a screen snip here where you can capture a part of the screen. You can even draw it freehand, it looks like. So you can see all the icons coming up across the top. So if I was to draw part of the screen, that snips it, it appears down here, and you can see that is now in my clipboard, so I can paste that into another document. So let's close that down. So folder navigation, what's that like? Uh, reasonable. It's definitely gonna benefit when Windows 11 has this thing where it makes things bigger on a touch screen. So some operating systems work better than others on that, but obviously I've got things like Android and uh, Chrome OS to try, all sorts of different things. Uh, I guess if I try the web browser, oh, no, I can't try the web browser because I have no internet connection because this version of Windows 11 doesn't support Wi-Fi. So obviously loads of the other builds are gonna support Wi-Fi on this. I can get around it. I've got this Vonitz adapter which is not very elegant for a tablet. So if I plug the USB in and I also plug in the Ethernet connection, what that does is you see this lights up and this is now gonna give this a Wi-Fi connection. 
there you go so it's just come online so now if I do a search for say YouTube and there's my video so let's tap on that and just check that it plays video all right there we go so that's looking all right this version of Windows 11 also uh, doesn't have sound so let's put something on that's more compatible with the tablet let's install Raspad okay so let's pop an SD card into the Pi you can see it's detected it down the bottom right press the Windows key and start typing imager and you can see images come up there let's select that and yes now I'm going to see if the OS is available through Raspberry Pi Imager because there's loads of systems on here so Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS other no it's not in there other OS's emulation and game other specific purpose okay so it's not on there so we've got to load it as a custom image but we're going to download it first so let's start up the browser and you want to go to this address raspad.com forward slash pages forward slash download and you can see here based on raspberry pi os 32 bit uh, was it 6.6 .6 gig let's download that okay so that's downloaded now so let's open the location just check the file so raspad os i would imagine i probably need to unzip it but let's try it first of all with imager so use custom image raspad os and open choose storage and i choose the 32 gig sd card that i've got and hit right and yes so it looks like it didn't need to unzip it looks like everything's working okay okay so that's all finished so we can eject the card and pop it into the raspad and it's just resizing the file system now choose your time zone system needs to be rebooted to apply the settings and so at this stage as well remember that the usb stick is still in there so the windows 11 usb stick is still inside the raspad but because i put an sd card in that's what it's choosing to boot from because it always prioritizes the sd card oh very different yes yeah, so it's very much uh tiles doesn't look at all like uh, raspberry pi os so if i hit home do I, do I ever get a desktop environment? Oh, that is home, is it? Programming, education, office. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. So if I pick Chromium web browser, obviously what it's going to do uh, is tell me that it's not connected to the internet. But uh, yeah, now it launches something that looks like Raspberry Pi OS. So you can see along the top here, uh, it's just got a different color to it. Uh, and the removable medium, so that's picked up the Windows 11 uh, USB stick. Adobe Flash Player, there's a tab for there, which is gone now. Uh, so, yeah, so I need to connect it to the Wi-Fi. But while it's on this screen, so if I press the top bit, which would normally give you... So that is the drop-down menu that you'd normally get in Raspberry Pi OS. So if I do something like Preferences, yeah, it is, so it's basically all the same things, but it's it's very nicely done in that it's designed to work for touch. Obviously, some things like this are more like Windows has done touch in the past where you know it's smaller tabs because it's using the other operating system but to get there all of this is very well thought out I wonder what resolution I'm running in so this is obviously picked the resolution uh, here we go so this let's just check what resolution it is configure screens HDMI resolution so 1280 by 800 there is a 1920 by 1080 option so what happens if I pick that So that does work as well, but obviously makes everything smaller on the screen, so I can see why they've gone for that lower resolution. So the earlier part of this video was yesterday. Uh, last night I played around with this and just sort of did general use on it and uh, tried it out, and I really do like it. Uh, one thing I did forget to do uh, was put this little accelerator shim module on it. So basically, um, the, the Pi can orientate itself just like your phone can. Uh, so if I flip it up, side down so you can stand it up you can see that it flipped itself then uh, and it works the same on an angle you've got to be careful not to put it on this angle because it turns itself off but you can see that it goes in portrait mode and landscape mode as well and so in landscape mode if we plug in a mouse keyboard uh, then we can use mouse and keyboard in the normal way that you would uh, so all of that works as expected 
Uh, so it's nice to be able to switch between the two. So in a sense, it's got its own stand built in. So if I do a search, Hot UK Deals, and you can see you can move up and down fine with the mouse and keyboard, uh, but also I can switch to touch as well, so I can switch between both. So let's try a different operating system. Let's try FIDE OS, which is Chrome OS. So I need to shut this down. Let's do it all in touch. And shut down. Let's move the key. I'm going to unplug the keyboard for this because um, FIDE OS works very well as a touch system. Uh, so if I take out the micro SD card and FIDE OS is on this one, I think. Make sure I pop it in the right way around. There you go, clips in nicely. And if I uh, power it off by pressing and holding, and also power it on again. There we go, and let's start it up. So it's got the accelerometer in, but I don't know if that works with every operating system, so you can see that came in upside down. Uh, but we'll see what happens with the operating system. And again, the USB stick is still in there with Windows 11 on it. Right, so it hasn't detected that it's upside down. So it looks like the accelerometer doesn't work on this operating system. There might be something you can do. Uh, so I just need to log into that. Okay, so this is Fido S. I haven't launched this for a while, so it's doing loads and loads of updates at the moment. Uh, but if I call up Chromium, and you can see that YouTube is on the screen now, uh, I probably can go full screen on that, I can. So if I go to my channel, uh, and then let's do my usual search, Blue PSP Video HDR, and play this video. So the keyboard comes up uh, perfectly as you would expect it to. Uh, just as if you're using it on on a Chromebook or a tablet. And you can hear the audio is working fine through this. Video playback's always been pretty decent in, in this. So, how do I get out of that double tap? No, or I can shrink it here, look. So let's try a bit of gaming. So I have my Xbox 360 controller. Now I could use a Bluetooth controller, which wouldn't have to use this dongle, but it saves me having to do pairing or anything like that. So I'm literally just gonna plug that in and that will have controller. Uh, because I'm gonna stand it upside down and the orientation doesn't work automatically with this, uh, there is an option in settings. So if I go into settings uh, and there's an option on displays, Yeah, displays. And you see here, orientation. So we need to go 270 to turn it upside down. No, we don't, we need to go 180, of course we do. So 180, but it's nice to see that it goes into portrait mode. So now we can stand this up. There we go, so now we're stood up. Let's close that down and drag up from the bottom and find San Andreas, because I was really impressed to see this working so well in Fido S, there it is. This is the Android version of this game. And let's see if this is, yeah, so it's recognizing my controller. And I've played this before in a separate video. And here we go, here's San Andreas, looking good. Little wheelie. And into a stoppy. Yeah, very impressive to see this running on this. Right, let's try something else. I guess I'll try a bit of Android. And that's on my SanDisk 64 Pro. Okay, this is Consta Kang's version of Lineage OS, and you can see it started in portrait mode. I don't know if the accelerometer is gonna make a difference now. It doesn't look like, oh yeah, it does. Oh, okay, so it just works anyway. I don't have to do anything, or does it? That's weird, because it changed mode. It's probably gonna be, because I've got this uh, rotation app in here, which has all sorts of settings on it. So, now because I've got this ro rotation control app, it's probably do something weird. Start control and rotation. Right, so if I turn that off, start and boot off. I did this because I didn't have a, a uh, accelerometer before, so I couldn't change it. So what happens now? So nothing at the moment. Let's go into settings, display, rotation settings, auto rotate screen, rotate lock screen, 90 degrees. 
doesn't seem to no, but I'm sure earlier on it did change. It's not my imagination, it did change. But I have this rotation control, which is manual. Um, so let's turn that on. Uh, and it comes in the control center. And so I can do it in portrait just by pressing that. And you can see that's gone to portrait. Um, but I can also go back into landscape and then I can flip it right the way over. Yeah, that looks like the right one. Okay, so I can, I can record the screen better when it's like this. But that's a good way of being able to switch between all the modes. Uh, and there may be a way of getting it to automatically work, um, but manually doing it is so easy, especially as it starts on boot. So if I launch the Play Store, for instance, everything comes up. I can switch between open apps as well. And this would have been ages ago. Uh, I haven't used this for quite some time. What we got on here, there's YouTube. Don't know what resolution that's in. If it if it lets me choose, oh, that's 360 at the moment. So let's go, let's go for 1080 anyway. That's not bad for 1080 on the Pi. That looks pretty good. So let's close that down. And what games have we got? I haven't got a lot of games on here, really. Yeah, it's nice and responsive. No worries with that. Looking pretty good. Oh, until that happened. I'm really pleased with it. As a tablet, yes, it is chunky, but I was thinking about this today uh, while I was at work, and I was thinking, this is a great thing for, say, backing up photos on as a portable device, because you could have as much storage as you want inside there. You know, you could get a very large USB stick. I'm sure you could fit an M.2 drive inside this as well. There's plenty of space in there. Uh, and uh, you can also get better performance if you're going to put an M.2 drive in there as well. Uh, I think I'm going to explore uh, different ways of calling it and also undervolting it. Uh, basically, if you undervolt and underclock, you lower the speed of the processor, but you're going to find that it will be a completely silent unit. And for certain uses, you don't need to overclock. You don't even need... So one gigahertz gives reasonable performance for certain things. Uh, so I'm going to have a play around with that. Thanks very much to Razpad for sending me one of these to test. And thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.